Nightfall in Baltimore, trapped between a dark harbor and sinister sky. A city with a long history of murder and mystery ever since Edgar Allan Poe wrote and died here. Now it's the case of Annie McCann that captivates. How does a white 16-year-old girl from the Virginia suburbs wind up dead here in the projects? Her stunned parents haunted this Halloween night by a note left on their daughter's bed. This morning I was going to kill myself, but I realized I can start over instead. If you really love me, you'll let me go. What started as a suicide note was beginning to sound like a runaway note, goodbye. I know I'm only 16, but I'm almost 17. I'll be careful. That's how that note ended, I'll be careful. Why would she run away? Was there something brewing that maybe... Well, apparently. But was there something possible that you could look back on and think, maybe she was upset about this? No. Dan called me and told me, and I'm like <laughs> dropping the phone like, what? What, indeed. Equally as confounding as what they will learn later, that Annie had taken $1,000 in cash, money she'd stashed away, all her favorite clothes, even a box of Cheerios. But nothing in the note hints at where she's going. Did Baltimore make any sense to you? Did, was there any connection to Baltimore? No connection to Baltimore. No sense at all. Annie could not even find her way to Baltimore. There were all sorts of unusual angles to this. To Washington Post Metro writer Tom Jackman, the mysterious death of a 16-year-old girl is big news. Beyond the fact that a suburban girl was found dead in the inner city of Baltimore, there's no real explanation for how she died. You don't see this very often. No. It wasn't the usual bill of fare for Baltimore homicide detective Sean Jones either. 90 to 95 percent of the cases we're dealing with are African-American males that are shot on a street corner. I'm obviously going to look at this twice. Uh, and not just glance over it as your average everyday case. Then the case seems to crack like one of those famous Maryland crabs. First, police find Annie's Volvo abandoned at a gas station. Then a tiny clue, a smudge. It's a fingerprint that matches someone already in their database. Could it be Annie's killer? We had to get the fingerprint processed, and then once we got the name back from the fingerprint, that's when that we moved on that. Turns out the print belongs to a teen boy who says he and some friends came across the car in the projects. He says Annie, face down in the back, is already dead. So as twisted as it sounds, they dump her body and go joyriding in her car. So these boys just dumped her body? Yes, ma'am. And took the car? Yes, ma'am. One young man connected to the group, Darnell Kinlaw. Remember that name because you'll hear it again. But police don't charge him or anyone with assaulting Annie, in part because of the condition of her body. They're certain Annie was not beaten, strangled, stabbed, or shot. When I initially met the McCanns, I made it very clear that I didn't know what we had and that the autopsy 99.9% .9 of the time is going to give us more clarity on what we're dealing with. Then the autopsy results are in, and they're a surprise to everyone. Annie had a small amount of alcohol in her blood, but a large amount of something else, lidocaine. 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 100 lidocaine. It's a drug you may have heard of on those medical shows like Grey's Anatomy. Nasal speculum and lidocaine. To finally relieve your pain, now's the time for lidocaine. It's also a common numbing agent in all kinds of over-the-counter products, including Bactine relieves pain on contact. Bactine, the antiseptic Annie had for her newly pierced ears. Did you even know what Bactine was at I that did. point? Yeah, yeah. I have kids myself. I knew exactly what it was. Um, and I knew what the active ingredients were. But it's there in black and white. Annie died of lidocaine poisoning. Back at that gas station, crime scene investigators find what in any other case might be an innocuous piece of trash. But now Detective Jones considers it a smoking gun. We found near the car a Bactine bottle that had the lid removed. It's not a screw top bottle. It's something that requires a little bit of force to get off. And Annie's DNA is discovered on the exposed part of the bottle. The medical examiner who did the autopsy won't guess how the lidocaine got into Annie's system, calling it undetermined. But the seasoned detectives have no doubt. It's suicide. But who kills themselves with Bactine? People kill themselves. I've been in homicide for 15 years. And they get very creative. And 
this is just one of those methods. To the authorities, this was a pretty open and shut case. She died of a lidocaine overdose. Problem is, it's so rare to find that someone died of that kind of overdose that it's gonna lead to some questions. This doesn't add up, this can't be. This is what you came up with, that she drank a bottle of Bactine? And the McCanns are taking notes on other things that don't add up. It was sound of the Baltimore police to consider suicide. It was, is, reprehensible to conclude suicide. They don't buy it, as they explain in an article they later write. If Annie was going to kill herself, they ask, why go all the way to Baltimore to do it? And if she drank that Bactine, why did the police not find her fingerprints on the bottle? Her prints and our prints should be all over that bottle. Who wipes fingerprints while killing themselves? And who writes a to-do list like Annie did on her hand if they're planning to end it all, reminding her to do her chores and say her prayers? We thought it was a baffling mystery. Nobody's heard of anybody overdosing on Bactine, much less a kid from the suburbs who didn't seem to be that unhappy with life. Uh, and so we continued to press forward with the story. And the story was far from over.